Hey, welcome. My name is Patrick Rooney. Welcome to Old School Live. We are going live tonight. Well, we can call this Saturday Night Live, right? Saturday Night Live, Old School Live. Uh, we did another, this is a second live stream we're doing this week, which I think is a first. And we, I did one the other night. I did one sa uh, Wednesday night with my old longtime friend, Mark Yaffe, who's also a comedian, uh, a successful comedian. In fact, he's out there tonight down in Burbank, California, I believe, doing his thing. And um, he is, we do not see eye to eye on many political things, although we've known each other since we were kids. Well, that doesn't mean we should see each other, see eye to eye, but we do have a lot of the same experiences. Uh, so I brought him on and we had a very interesting discussion. And I want to tell you guys about it because I think it's a learning tool for everybody. So thanks for being with us tonight. Um, let me see. Mr. Sandy LaFontaine is in the chat. Adriana Bavacqua is here. All right. Hey, Adriana, how are you? Jew Beans here. Hey, it's cool. Rennie John Myers here. All right. Hello. How are you? All right. People are starting to climb on board. I love this. Uh, where's Mo? Mo is taking the night off. Mo, uh, Mo has some stuff he has to do tonight, and we're going to miss Mo tonight. Oh, hi, Chance. John Meyer. Great to see you as well. And Tibar. Hey, Tibar. How are you? Um, yeah, Mo is not here tonight. Mo's missing the action, and but he had something he had to do tonight, so uh, I gave him the night off, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to be a little busier than normal. But that's okay. Um, let me see. Let me see where to get started here because I don't know. This was a weird thing that happened. And I just want to kind of tell you guys kind of how the show happened Wednesday night with my with my old friend Mark Yaffe, the comedian, who is I would call him kind of liberal, and I'm a, I'm I would say I'm very conservative, have been for a long time. Um, he's going to call himself a moderate. A lot of liberals don't call themselves by the liberal name. They'll use a different word or whatever, but he's not like a real radical guy either. I wouldn't call him a leftist by any means. I would call him a liberal actually. Uh, but he would call himself a moderate. Um, in any case, all right, I'm going to look at, uh, Jubin said, no mo on you. You got this bro. <laughs> you got this bro. <laughs> Thank you, man. Um, so tonight here's the title of the show. How Losing a debate can be great. I know I'm not much of a poet here. I thought rhyming it would be kind of, I don't know, it sounded good to rhyme it. Now it sounds, looks kind of foolish, right? How losing a debate can be great. Is it possible to lose a debate and have that be great? Well, it wasn't like that at first. Let me tell you what happened. So we did a show. The intention of the show was not exactly a debate. That's not exactly, that's not what I brought Mark on for. And that's not what we talked about before the show. It was supposed to be so that different people with different viewpoints could kind of come together and talk about some stuff uh, without ripping each other apart, which is going on in America today. It seems like you've got to be on this tribe or you got to be in this tribe. And if you're not, um, and if you're on this tribe, you got to hate this tribe and so on and so forth. Nothing in common, you know, uh, nothing we can talk about, just that's it. We're in different tribes. Now, I understand if they're, if they're, we're dealing with people here who are trying to just flat out destroy the country. You're talking about hardcore Antifa people, hardcore leftists who just want to take America out. Their intention is to take it out. They don't want to talk. That's fine. I can't talk with those people. But um, I think it is good in America. In the old days, we used to, we weren't even that concerned about our differences in politics, really. Because at least we had the same basic values to some degree. So we didn't really concern ourselves too much with, you know, you're this and I'm, I'm that. And therefore, I'm not going to talk to you. This is a modern situation. This is a modern problem. It's only been happening very, very recently where people on one side won't talk to the other people. It's gotten to be a really crazy situation. So that's why I brought my friend Mark on. We had... At last election uh, during the uh, when when the Trump versus Biden or maybe even the last one before that I can't even remember what it was, but um, I got into it with my friend Mark and we kind of separated. I separated from some some of my friends on Facebook. There were people who were just getting ridiculous. I was pr I was supporting Trump um, when Trump lost. I showed up in D.C. 
and supported Trump. No, I did not go in the building. I had nothing to do with that. But I was there at the big rally that was outside with, you know, lots, I don't know, maybe 100,000 people. I don't know what the number was, but it was at the Washington Memorial, the monument. Trump gave a speech. He asked people to come and support him. And I did. Uh, I thought what happened was wrong, that he was, uh, use my, be careful with my language here on Facebook, but I believe that he won and was being railroaded out of uh, the office. And I thought it was absolutely wrong and traveled a long distance to get there to support him. I'm, I'm proud of that. Um, and right around that time, though, uh, people on Facebook were getting very weird about it. Anything you heard about January 6th was like just being at a big rally on the same day as January 6th. All of a sudden, when people heard that, they were like, oh, you're one of those people. And they, I'm going to turn you in. And somebody on, uh, told me on Facebook they're going to turn me in. Right. And turn me into the FBI for being at a major rally that was completely regular. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and so it got really weird on Facebook. So I kind of broke off from Mark in a way at that point. He was running. He was against Trump. He was making fun of Trump. I didn't I didn't like it at the time at all. And um, so we just kind of broke apart. I broke apart with other friends. But I did. I wanted to be able to kind of. I don't want to just break apart from people unless there's a really strong, good reason. If there are people who uh, I can talk with, we can try to work out some solutions potentially for America. I'm all ears. Let me go right to the comments before I go any further. I don't want to leave you guys out of the loop. Uh, Mr. Sandy LaFontaine says, good to debate with people who don't automatically agree with you gives us an idea of how we might better present our positions. Yes, sir. This is what I want to get into a little bit tonight, because we get around people that agree with us, and that's fine. We we all have our cliques, but the problem is, since we already see it the same way, basically, we kind of lose our muscles at kind of uh, explaining and bringing people along who may not see it that way and things like that, and we get a little bit rusty. And since I really didn't go into this last conversation with my friend Mark uh, in a way that I was was I, I was thinking of a debate, I wasn't sitting there jacked up with facts and all this stuff. We were just kind of talking off the head. And I wanted to hear what he thought. I wanted to hear how he kind of came about his ideas. You know, where was he getting his information from? How does he look at things and things like that? And so Mark is, is kind of good. He's good verbally. He's a comedian. He's a professional comedian. Um, I'm okay verbally, but I've never been too good at remembering facts to be, to be honest with you. I'm not great at remembering jokes, you know, long jokes that people are really good at or funny stories or, um, anything that you kind of have to memorize. Memorization is kind of like low on the end of my scale. I'm just not really good at that. We're all good at certain things. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm not a memorizer. Um, that being said, we can all do better at certain things. And now that I've had this experience, it kind of woke me up to be a little bit better informed about certain things and be able to start articulating ideas a little bit better. So I really, uh, it's like somebody said the other day, the difference between sparring, uh, I forgot who said it, one of my friends said, I think it was Sergeant Francis, said the difference between sparring and being uh, in a fight, you know, like, or, or practicing punching you know, uh, to a bag, a heavy bag, you're punching heavy bag, speed bag, right? Just speed bag. Um, there's a difference between doing that and actually getting in a fight. So, um, that is really, really useful. And, um, um, we need to be in more of that. If we want to march forward and take more ground, which I do, uh, as a Republican, I see that the leadership of the Republican Party is pathetic. Mitch McConnell uh, in the, on the Senate. And this guy is willing to lose the Senate to Democrats as long as he can stay in control and keep his friends around him. He's willing to throw uh, Trump candidates under the bus and he doesn't care if they lose. And already, and, and I may talk on another live stream about this, but a lot of these candidates are already behind in the polls. Herschel Walker in Georgia is behind like 10 points in the polls to a uh, to War Warnock. I call him Warlock. Uh, Warnock, this guy who very likely was the recipient of funny voting 
as was the other uh, person that got in the Senate in Georgia, because Georgia was stupid enough not to lock down their systems. And uh, they, he probably got in with funny voting. And we're paying the price right now because losing the Senate is no joke. So, yeah, I'm very interested in this stuff. I want to see Republicans generally do a lot better uh, or whoever, whoever wants to be for America, which typically that's either a Republican or an independent these days, in my opinion. If you were a Democrat, there are probably a few OK Democrats here and there. But on a national level, and I said this to Mark on the last show, on a national level, there um, you almost have to be pro-abortion to be a Democrat, to get anywhere in the Democrat Party. You have to be pro-abortion. Sorry, you just lost me right there. If you have to be for a killing of unborn children in the womb, you're I'm, I'm out. I'm not with you. So if you're gonna if you're gonna fall into that and say okay I'm gonna do that but on every other issue I'm okay, uh, it don't work that way. All right. Anyway, uh, let me take a few more comments before I go further. But just to, just to, so you guys are clear, I'm finishing the point here. I brought Mark in. I wasn't really all that re- prepared. Even if I was better prepared, I'm not saying I'm the best debate person in the world. I'm not. I'm not Ben Shapiro. I'm not Candace Owens. I'm not uh, Jordan Peterson. Um, I'm not somebody who's really fast, you know, with my mouth and, and, and all that. My, I think where I'm at, and this is where I think that I, the rubber really meets the road here. This is where I'm about, really. I had a conversation again with, with my friend Mark today. We're, I almost got him on the show again tonight, but he wasn't able to do it because he had a comedy routine to do. Um, but I was talking with him. We had a great conversation and I wish we could have recorded that. I have so many good conversations with friends that I wish I could record, just play for you guys. You you guys would, would really love it. So we had a conversation today and here's where it's at between us. Mark is basically saying the federal government is really necessary for them to have a big, powerful federal government because they have to basically stop you from doing wrong. They have to stop the average person from doing wrong. They have to, and if not for them, people would do wrong. And that is true to a certain point. But my thing is, I'm more into making better people, not making better people, but encouraging people to be better and helping them in any way to be better human beings so that they don't need a big government to begin with. Doesn't that make sense? That's kind of the st- classic conservative position. Unfortunately, we are going to grow our government unless we return to God, unless we return to values, unless we return to our uh, where we were in America at one time. Not exactly the same, because we've learned a lot along the way, but return to our values. And if we don't return to our values, it's like, uh, I think it was John Adams who said, this constitution is only good for a moral people, it's unsuitable for any other type of people, basically, paraphrasing. Um, So that's what it is. And even when Trump was in power and doing well and doing great things for America, as I tried to explain to Mark, um, I could see that we were losing our culture. Our culture was sliding downward, even when Trump was in power. And I said at the time, we're going to lose eventually we're going, you know, Trump will be out of power. We're going to lose things. As it turned out, Trump was knocked out a lot quicker than he should have been. Uh, and now he's kind of trying to get back in and we'll see how that goes. Um, but but if we don't hold the culture, not hold the culture, that implies a defensiveness. If we don't go on the offensive and you say take back the culture, yeah, take back, but it's not just a matter of grabbing something. It's a matter of being something. If you are the culture, if you are, as Gandhi said, what you talk about, you, if you become that, that person that you want to be, that person will shine and people will listen to you. But if you are a hypocrite and you're not becoming the right kind of person and you're just talking a good game, you're not going to bring people to your side. All you're going to do is you're going to bring fake conservatives in. So you're going to have fake conservatives who are going to get mad at, at, at liberals who are, I wouldn't call the liberals too fake. I think they're pretty much, a lot of them are just flat out evil. Some of them are misguided. Um, but, but you're going to have a conflict, uh, not of so much of good and evil, but just of, of hate on each side pretty much. And then, and then they destroy, these sides destroy each other. 
uh, above that would be your elite people who are fostering this whole problem uh, between the, the right and the left. They're creating a lot of the stuff and they are dividing and conquering. They're doing it right now. So if we don't become smart enough to see their game and we don't raise our morality as individuals and we don't be, uh, become better in our families and our communities, we can hang it up. It doesn't matter even if you get your elections back, even if everything, and, and believe me, you do need to get them back. You do need to be involved in politics. You do need to uh, make sure that everything is working correctly and your eyes are on it. But if your eyes are not on here, this person first, you might as well hang it up. Not, you, you're not going to, we're not going to win. We'll never get our country back. We're on a tipping point right now anyway. Um, all right. I said enough for the moment. Let me go to comments. Chance, uh, John Meyer. Hello, Chance. It's great that you're here. Uh, he says we have to be willing to listen to others. Yeah. If we can't talk to other fellow Americans, what is the point of having an America? What is the point of one nation under God? And I understand a lot of people have left God and all that, but it's when we become hateful towards our fellow human beings, I don't care what we believe in politically. We have left God too. We've left him as well. Nice, nice point, Chance. Um, Mr. Loff and Sandy Loftane, were you the guy wearing the Buffalo headdress? That's funny. Uh, no, but that guy brought some, I guess, some comedy relief, right? Uh, among a very tense situation. Uh, no, I did not, not see that guy that day. Uh, all right, let's see. Oh, here you go. Wow. Okay. Jubin says, I think that Trump should be jailed for the terrorist attack he called for on peace. Wait, I think Trump should be jailed for the terrorist attack he called for on peace and the Capitol building. Well, if you can find me the quotation where Donald Trump asked for a terrorist attack to happen against the Capitol building, as far as I know, and I left, the, you know, I was there and it was cold. It was dang cold out that day. It was cold and windy in D.C. And I left before Trump even finished. I don't think Trump's speech I thought he was going to show some more evidence that day and really put together a better, because there's a lot of evidence for what he was talking about, but I don't think they did that good of a presentation that day. It was very, very cold. And I got out a little bit early. It was, it was very cold there. Um, but uh, I don't remember him at any point saying, nor did I see any, anything on uh, online or, or on TV or anything where he called out and asked for uh, these people to be attacked. All he said, as, as far as I know was, we're going to go down there and peacefully protest at the Capitol building. That's all I know. That's all I heard. If somebody or heard otherwise, please let me know. All right. Uh, Sergeant Francis is here. Good to see you. Um, let's see. Jubin. Yeah. Uh, Greg is here. Uh, oh, okay. I'm going to put you on, Greg. Uh, Martin Francis says that you should be like the Democrats in their debates and just declare victory. Yeah. LOL. Uh, that's funny. They do things like that. Now, um, reminded me that it's funny because when you do a thing like this after the show and, 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 and my friend Mark did a great job, uh, I think on the show he did, I think he did fine. I mean, he did better than I did. I would say he beat me. If you're going to call it a debate, let's just say it turned into a debate. That's fine. I'm happy to admit it turned into a debate and my friend did well. I was going to show you a picture of my friend and I wasn't able to bring it up real quick because I'm running the board and messing up here. Uh, I can't find anything right now. I apologize. Here's my friend, Mark. So that's my friend, Mark, on stage. I think he's on stage tonight in Burbank. And uh, his website is uh, laughwithmark.com. But uh, I've known him for years and years. And I told I talked about that on the first show. But Mark did a great job with that. And he's uh, he's very good at talking about that kind of stuff. So in terms of debate, hey, I lost. I'm, I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to admit that I wasn't happy about it, and I took a lot of grief from friends. And there's a lot of people that come on and maybe didn't understand what I was trying to do on the show either. But it was all about like, oh, you missed this opportunity. You did this. You missed this. Uh, you know, you weren't up to the task. Blah 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 blah. And I went through like the seven stages of grief or something at the beginning. It's like first disbelief, and then anger, and then you know, um, whatever you went through, I went through all this stuff, you know, and, uh, and it was kind of like, I was kind of bugged that I couldn't come up with stuff, but I just realized, Hey, I could, you know, 
I didn't come up with stuff at the time. Like I said, I'm not exactly Mr. Facts that can just spit them out like that. And, uh, and I wasn't necessarily looking up the facts before the show so I could kind of read stuff off or whatever. And so I was kind of a little bit like bothered, you know, that I couldn't kind of come up with some of the stuff I wanted to, but that's the way it goes sometimes. And that's, that's live too. So I would love to be, you know, in a position where I win all the debates and I got all the right answers and all that stuff. I would love to do that, but it doesn't always happen that way. Uh, you do the best you can at the time and you kind of have to live with whatever it is. That's one of the things I, um, I learned, I, I, I learned is that just, you got to, you know, always work to get sharper at your facts. And if you go into a situation, you kind of have to realize it could turn into a debate, right? I mean, I should, I kind of knew that in the back of my mind. So I, I didn't really listen to that enough and didn't really sharp myself up. So practice people, right? If you're going to have a test, what do you do? You practice for the test. You don't wing it. All right. Am I on? Am I on? Hello? Okay. Am I on? <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Let me know, guys, if you can see me, okay? And then we'll continue if you can see me. Da, da, da. If you guys want some song, you want some music? <laughs> okay, Sandy, am I on? Can you actually? Okay, you guys apparently can see me. That's weird because we never went off. I guess I was off technically for a bit, but the stream was going and I'm hearing from my people here. Apparently, I am on. Okay, I'm back. Okay, cool. That is weird. And I don't know why we went off. There was nothing I could do. All I could do was sweat. Woo. And, uh, but all I could do was kind of see if everything was plugged in right and all that. And that's it. All right. 
anyway, I'm glad you guys can see me. So let me put Chance's comment on. Let's hopefully we can stay on here. I've never been off that long before. And I don't like it, especially because I don't know what it was that we did wrong here. So it's hard to deal with. All right. Chance Johnemeyer says, we're a nation of laws, Republic and Democrat. The legal process has to be the same. It doesn't matter if they are speaking pure trash. We have to measure their actions in relation to the law only. All right. Yeah. Amen to that. Um, yeah. I mean, and but if someone's speaking pure trash, it, it, on the other hand, I'm not going to interview them unless I always want to show that they're pure trash. <laughs> you know, I mean, I interview Mark as a friend because I think he means well. And I, I know he means well. I've known him for many years. It's different if somebody just, you know, it hates America and they just want everything destroyed. So if I can talk to you and we can talk to each other, and even if he has different ideas, we were talking today about the role of the federal government, you know, and it's very interesting. I don't agree with a lot of stuff he says, um, but he, when you deal with people that have a different opinion in you, it makes you, it kind of works you. They say iron, what they call steel versus steel or whatever like that, steel sharpened steel. And if you're not willing to be sharpened up, I mean, what are we doing out there? Are we just going to play like we're going to like practice in the batting cage all the time? We never go into a real game. Are we going to get among our friends all the time and just talk here? Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, yeah. Biden's terrible. Biden's horrible. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's awful. OK, well, what about are we aren't we going to try to gain ground instead of just losing ground? And that's kind of what I'm about. That's what I realize I'm here for. I'm not here to spit every single fact out at you guys, this and that. Yes, I can do better in a debate. I'm happy to get better in debates. Don't get me wrong. But that's not my strong suit, I don't think. My strong suit is to be here to remind you of the old school. Old school. That's old school values to begin with. That's the way things were done back in the day. Not all perfect. We learned from the things that we did that were wrong. But the old school ways, by and large, are the best ways, and they are the ways that we are going to survive the coming hard times, okay? Um, now, wait, Brian said you can't see me now? Wait a minute. I hope you guys can see me still. I see myself. I didn't go out, so hopefully somebody's seeing me. All right, um, I'm going to keep posting stuff, and hopefully you guys can see me. Just let me know. Give me feedback, because... I don't know unless you guys tell me. All right. Uh, Sergeant Francis said there are prosecutors. Uh, he's not price crimes. What? There's a Justice Department that will not prosecute crimes. We're, for, we're beyond the Pollyanna view of the law. I agree. We're at a certain point uh, there. We're beyond the law in certain ways. That is true. Okay. Chance says he can see me. I can see me. All right. I'm hearing from the people back here. What are you telling me? I think they can see me. Okay, they're all seeing me. Yeah, I don't know what's up with you, Brian, but other people can see me right now. Okay, let me move on from that what point I was just making, okay? Because I want to move on to the next point here. Here is the next point I learned. This is for every person on earth. Um, when you lose or your ego tells you you lost or whatever, you look bad, you looked ridiculous, whatever, and you believe that in any kind of way whatsoever, um, you go into pain. You go into severe pain. And I, I ended up, you know, as that wore off after the show and it started sinking in, and I started seeing the comments from people. And it's like, yeah, I went into a certain amount of pain, a lot of pain, actually, that, that first night. And I just kind of, you've got to, re, you kind of come to a point where you're, you're looking at, okay, what is happening to your ego? But your ego is like, it's not really you. It's like everything that has to get burned away from you, you know? So in a way, I'm kind of happy to lose if it takes me to lose to get my ego hurt. I had some idea that I could just kind of automatically, you know, spout out facts as needed. And I've got this truth and this and that. And when you can't come up with what you think you could or your ego told you you could, it's it's kind of a wake-up call. So it's good to kind of see what you really are. What do they say? Don't think of yourself too highly or too lowly. Just be who you are. And it's something that God is working out of us. I mean, it says in the Bible about 
what does it say that you in the furnace, uh, you go in the furnace and it burns off the dross, right off the silver or whatever that is. So we all need, you know, we either need the furnace now or you're going to get the furnace later. <laughs> Which furnace do you want? You know, uh, we're going to get the furnace. And if you love God, you're going to get the furnace. Uh, if you are a hater of God, you're going to get a, a furnace that's even worse and potentially forever. Right. So you don't want that kind of furnace. So it's better to face who you are now, face the reality of your situation now and just be who you are. I can't live up or down to anybody's expectations here. If somebody wants me to be uh, somebody else. I'm not that person. I'm the person who's here doing what I do. And I'm focusing more and more and understanding more and more what my role is. What is my role here? Like I say, my role, I believe, is to is to kind of bring out the old school ways, particularly helping people, myself and my family and my community and helping us together, those who want it, to come back to God, right? Uh, to be still and know, right? We talk about uh, Christian meditation here a lot. So to come back to that is crucial. If we don't do that again, we're, we're totally, lo- I don't care what we win, what victories we win, what good is, what profit is a man, right? To gain the whole world and lose his soul. We're here, first of all, for our souls. And if we don't get that right, it doesn't matter what we win. We're not going to win anyway. We're not going to win anyway unless we do that. Well, we can win. We can win like the Democrats do by their means, right? Um, But it's not a real win. It's not a real win for God. It's not a real win for people. It's not a real win for life, freedoms, and all those things. So it's not a real victory. All right. uh, Let me move on here. I'm going to show you. This is an example for you guys, too. This is the next thing I want to show you guys. That's an example. Another example here is if you're going to debate in one way or another, uh, people have recommended to me, and they are right, that it's good to bring in some facts that show your point. Now, somebody can always come in with their own facts. The problem is, you know, I talked to Mark. He's got his own different set of facts. So we kind of have to see, well, what is the reality of the situation? Uh, I want to bring in my first uh, video here, and this one is about inflation, and it kind of talks about uh, what do you call it, the Inflation Reduction Act? That's a joke. Um, how do you in, how do you reduce inflation when inflation really means just printing more money? <laughs> Are they going to stop printing money? Is the federal government going to stop printing money? Is that how they're going to reduce inflation? No. They're going to try to reduce the effects of inflation before the election, right? The effects of, not inflation, but the effects of inflation. And what they're doing, like one of the things they're doing right now, they're playing, trying to play a mind game on you, is they are reducing, somebody's got control of this. And I'm sure some of their people do. Uh, they're reducing the price of gas, right? Because they want us to go to green energy. So they're, they've been purposely pushing us away from fossil fuels and all that stuff. So we'll go buy electric cars. But with the, with the election getting close, they're bringing down the price of gas. What are some people doing? Oh, price, gas is going down. Well, yeah, but you brought it, you jacked it up to here to begin with. And now you brought it down a little bit. And before it was down here with Trump. Don't be fooled, people, please. So let me bring on the first uh, video. I just want to show you There's ways that we can bring on facts about situations beyond opinion. Some of this is going to be called opinion, but inflation is obvious. What what we started with prices here under Trump, when when Biden got in, it went way up. Everybody knows that, even if you don't want to admit it. Anyway, I'm going to play the first video right now. This is about inflation. Joining me now, South Carolina Congresswoman, House Oversight and Reform Committee member, House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee member, Nancy Mays. Congresswoman, a pleasure to see you. What do you make of this mixed messaging? Well, it's all a lie. I mean, honestly, Biden pink, pinky promises that he's going to reduce inflation with the Inflation Reduction Act. But the truth is, inflation will be affected by 0.25 percent, a quarter of a point in about seven or eight years. And so it is not going to have an immediate impact. This is all about November and trying to get some momentum. And when Biden says that there's zero inflation, the truth is that was a lie too. July it was 8.5 percent. I went to the grocery store yesterday with my kids and eggs were up almost 50 percent. We spent 250 to 300 
$300 on groceries, more than we spent in I can't tell you when for the week. Uh, and every family is facing those same challenges when they go to the store and they're making tough decisions on what they buy and don't buy. Uh, but we're seeing the price increases exponentially at the gas station and the grocery stores. Certainly, the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, when they were uh, detailing the, the, the cost of this bill, didn't even have the final numbers. We're talking about $485 billion. We're talking about taxes that will be raised on the American people. When you have a subsidy, when you're taxing businesses large and small, somebody's going to pay that bill, and it's going to be working families and individuals uh, in this country. Inflation will continue to go up because deficit spending is a, is a major contribution to inflation. It's why we're here in the first place. So are higher taxes. There were 42 new taxes in the inflation bill just last year, and not to mention the Federal Reserve is printing trillions of dollars every single year. All of these things are affecting inflation. If we were going to really try to stop the buck and stop the tide and stem the tide of inflation, we would be cutting taxes. We wouldn't be doing deficit spending. We'd be spending money we have, not money we have to borrow from China and elsewhere. But that's not what the Biden administration is doing today, and it will harm workers across the country exponentially now and in the future. All right. So there's a little bit of, of fact that that's something that you can bring in. You can bring in a little video here and there. Video can be great because how do you prove Now you can't prove every, any, everything to everybody. There are certain people that don't want any proof of, of any kind. They'll just hide their eyes or pretend they didn't see it. But and I'm not trying to bring everybody over and we can't spend inordinate amount of time on everybody. OK, um, a lot of what we need to do is talk to people who already understand it, who we don't have to debate with, who already get what's going on and are willing to do something about it. You just maybe need to motivate some people a little bit, like get out to the polls, you know, bring your friends, that kind of stuff. Um, and by the way, you better, if you think you've got a red wave coming, as I said a little bit earlier in the, sh in the, in the sh uh, show, I'm not saying we don't have a red wave coming. We should. I mean, by any measure of, of, we obviously should have a red wave. I mean, Biden and company clearly are trying to destroy America on purpose. I, I don't, I may not be able to prove that to everybody who doesn't want that to be proven to me to, to, I don't care in a way. I, I mean, I'll try to work on improving it better or show whatever I can to show that. But I know they're trying to destroy our country on purpose. And that will destroy the country for liberals too, people on uh, on the other side. But some of them don't want to see that. Um, but we have to wake up to the fact that Mitch McConnell running the Senate doesn't care if he gets losses, as long as he keeps his team in place and doesn't allow pro-Trump candidates to win. He doesn't want to give power to Trump. If pro-Trump candidates win, Trump starts to become the kingmaker. He already is in the Republican Party. Uh, and Mitch McConnell doesn't want that. So he's willing to take losses. He also, as Tucker Carlson uh, uh, pointed out, it's a lot easier to throw stones from the sidelines and say, oh, the Democrats are this. It's easy to complain about what people in power are doing. It's a lot tougher to lead. It's a lot tougher to lead people and be responsible for, for uh, what you've put in place. Then you have to take some heat for that. Mitch McConnell is a total wuss, and uh, he has no desire to lead, apparently. All he wants to do is throw stones and keep his power, his little power base going. That's all that he wants to do. And meanwhile, if we listen to that and we don't get out there and do what we need to do, uh, in November, then we're going to have a uh, administration that is on purpose trying to destroy us. And if we give them enough time and we don't have enough pushback, indeed, they will destroy us. So please, people, wake up. All right. Greg Gergen says, do you remember that during Reagan's first presidential debate, he was not prepared? He got his butt kicked. Uh yeah, that is it talking about anybody in particular here that reminds me of something that just happened. Um, but then he prepared and won the next two debates. Yeah. And conversely, conversely, Mitt Romney kicked Obama's butt in the first debate in 20, was it 2012 election? Is that what it was? 2012? Yeah, because 2008 Obama came in, right? 2012 election, Mitt Romney kicked Obama's butt and some idiot pollster person said, oh, next debate, you have to act act presidential. How about acting presidential is kicking somebody's butt? Trump learned that. He was president. 
But no, Romney took the advice, apparently. You have to act presidential the next debate. Romney backed off and let Obama win. Let him win debates. And then I don't think Obama actually, can I say this on here? I don't think Obama actually um, should have been president 2012. I remember coming out of the polling uh, place where I was, I was a poll watcher at the time. I came out in my car, I turned on the uh, top of the new uh, top of the uh, top of the hour news. And I heard uh, them say Obama won and somebody, it felt like somebody had just bam, just punched me in the stomach. And I don't know if I could come up for air for God, how long was that? It was horrible. I don't believe that was real. No, even with Romney tanking the last debate or two and getting help from Candy Crowley, the debate moderator, shame on her, well, shame on all of them, um, he still prevailed, in, in my humble opinion. Uh, he still pr- probably easily prevailed. So there was something going on there. They slipped in the election after that, 2016. They slipped and weren't on their game, and Trump got in there, wasn't expected to, and he got in there. <clears throat> After he got in in 2016, I'm sure they said to themselves, we are never going to let this happen again. So we better be on our P's and Q's, guys. But very good point, uh, Greg. Uh, Sticks, Sticks Bass. Sticks Bass. I used to call him Sticks Bass. I am correcting this uh, outwardly right now. Sticks Bass. Because he's a drummer. I think there's a picture of him playing drum. Sticks is a bass thing, right? He's sticks, drum, bass. Bass, drum. Okay? It's not bass. I used to call him Sticks Bass. And I'm sorry about that. (laughs) Um, Sticks Bass says, I've never been able to find a Dem who's admitted to voting for Biden in the primaries. I think the Dem primaries were rigged too. Yeah. Um, One more comment here. Uh, Yeah. They rig, I'm sure there was something rigged against Bernie Sanders, right? Bernie Sanders is a total lefty, but the Democrats didn't want him to be the nominee uh, because he was too far left and he re- they realized that he was too far left to win a general election. Plus, he was maybe going to go after some of their sacred cows in the in the money in the money field. But I, I believe that they paid him off with a couple of houses anyway and shut him up for a while. All right. That's an opinion I just said. All right. Sergeant Francis says, I think Mitch McConnell is intimidated by all the violence towards the Supreme Court justices and the imprisonment of Trump advisors. Yeah, I'm sure he's intimidated. He's also kind of, he's a elitist. His wife is uh, Chinese. She is connected to people. I believe in the Chinese government. I believe she is. Elaine Chow is his wife's name. She's a known person. I'm not putting out any information that people don't know. Um, So, yeah, there's an issue there. Absolutely an issue there. So don't wait on Mitch McConnell or any of these people. Do what you need to do. But be right in here, guys. Okay, get right here and then we can be right out here. Then we have the whole enchilada. Don't don't just try to be right in the election. It's not going to be enough. Okay, I'm going to show you the next piece of evidence. Most of the time. Video evidence is good because it shows you stuff. Eyewitness stuff is good. But I think video evidence, I think, is the best evidence for a lot of things. So I'm going to show you the next piece of evidence. I'm going to, this is Michael Voris of Church Militant. It's churchmilitant.com. Church Militant is a group that interviewed myself and some other people uh, to show what really happened um, in the, uh, in, in the, uh, Jesse Peterson bond situation. Um, so I, I, I commend these guys. They're Catholics. I don't agree with them on a lot of their theology, but they are right on and going after the people that uh, they should go after. So I really like the work that they do. I, I, I went to Detroit to see their operation. Very, very impressive. These guys are, have a serious media operation. They mean business and they are together. They have a nice culture because it's together. They go to mass together. They have a chapel that's right part of the studios. Like the studio is here and then there's offices and then there's a chapel there. And they had me go into their chapel with them and and do some prayer and stuff. So that was, um, so I really respect these guys a lot. I'm going to show you a short video uh, by Michael Voris talking about the 2020 election. Does it prove every single thing? No, 
but it gives you, it reminds you of the where we were at in the election, where we were at and how they use things like mail-in ballots to do some very questionable things. All right, let's go with this one. The memo has gone out, abandon Biden. Two years ago, in the heat of the 2020 campaign, Hayden Biden was hailed by the regime, the media and party of death establishment, even as he barely left his basement. He granted almost no press conferences, rarely gave interviews, except the ones that were extremely controlled and choreographed, and did almost no traveling. Yet, despite all that, the media gushed over him, despite knowing he was mentally declining oftentimes had difficulty forming and or expressing a coherent thought and was allowed to dodge every important question or issue. Meanwhile, Trump was attacked and vilified on every front as COVID raged, or so we were told, with CNN due to be keeping track of the dead with their body count ticker updated every minute. It was so bad that people were told they couldn't dare risk leaving their homes even to vote. They would have to vote by mail or drop boxes all over the place. Other brave citizens could come and collect the ballots and hand them in for them. All that mattered was you get your ballot. They figured they'd leave it all the rest of it to be figured out afterwards. We know how all that played out, of course. In just five decisive counties, Fulton in Georgia, Philadelphia in Pennsylvania, Wayne in Michigan, Dane in Wisconsin, and Maricopa in Arizona, the vote counting just suddenly stopped. All of these states had all of these ballots sitting there. Many of them started counting them a day or two, three days ago. They had them all ready. And now we get to sort of the witching hour in the very states that everybody was talking about. And all of a sudden, everything comes grinding to a halt. Right. You were able to count, uh, I mean, how many ballots is that all together? It's a t that's uh, four and a half million. You were able to count four and a half million ballots in a day and a half, but now you can't count the remaining two exactly. or 300,000. Yeah. There's so many nice points in there, you know, about the count. Oh, there's these key places, Maricopa County in Arizona and these different counties in key battleground states. And I watched another video that showed Facebook in Zuckerberg. Uh, hopefully we're showing on Facebook right now. We're supposed to be showing on Facebook right now, actually. Um, but how Zuckerberg gave money to key areas on, per he gave money so there would be more voting, like get out the vote. Oh, I'm just, I'm just getting out the vote. See, I'm just a good citizen getting out the vote. Well, why are you getting out the vote in key areas that are battleground states in places where you flip a certain amount in that County and you can flip flip the whole election if you do enough of those you just concentrate and that's what the movie 2000 i'm not going to say the word on here donkeys you know the other word for donkey you guys can put it in the in the comment if you want i think i can put this up in a certain way on the screen and hopefully i'll get away with it that movie right there that movie right there now i asked mark in our in our conversation he told me that, oh, there was no credible, uh, no credible uh, sources that said that there was widespread election shenanigans, right? Uh, but of course, the problem is nobody wanted to touch it. And he said, he said another thing that the Supreme Court um, didn't want to deal with it either. And I believe I even said as bad as I did in the, in, in the conversation, I believe I even did say, wait a minute. It's not that they didn't, uh, it did have a case, but it had something to do with standing. And sure enough, I looked it up and Texas, the state of Texas is the one who made that, um, the, the case for the Supreme court. And, um, the Supreme Court said, we're not going to deal with this because Texas does not have standing uh, dealing with other states. They were dealing with Pennsylvania. I think it was Arizona. There was like four states altogether that were really key states and that Texas was challenging. And the Supreme Court says, no, you guys don't have standing to because you're just another state here. You can't say what happens in a other in, in one of the other states. Of course, you could say whatever happens in the other states affects the whole country. So it does affect all of us.
But nevertheless, the Supreme Court really didn't want to deal with it, I think, is, is really what happened. The Supreme Court was scared like others. They're just human beings. They didn't want to deal with the situation. They knew, like uh, somebody said here, that uh, they didn't want the intimidation, right? Sergeant Francis talked about Mitch McConnell didn't want the intimidation. Well, leftists know that they can intimidate people and they can scare people and they can get a certain amount of people to back off just for pure intimidation. Leftists are always been the same. They've always been just like their fathers, the communists um, and the fascists. They that's what the leftists do. That's what Hitler did. Hitler was a national socialist. What is it called? This National Socialist Party, I believe, the, the, the Nazis. They were socialists. <laughs> OK, I don't know why people say hey, you're a Hitler. You're a right wing. No, Hitler was left wing. He was a socialist party. So the left has always been about intimidation, um, killing. I mean, my God, look at communist dictatorships. Mao in China, look at millions killed. Look at Lenin in, in the Soviet Union. Look at Stalin. In fact, I have another video here, maybe I'll show on another show, where Stalin, some of you know what happened. He, st he, st he starved Ukrainians. They're called the Kulaks, I believe. He starved a whole group of people who wanted independence. Sound familiar? Uh, you know that we're going into, and we're going to have to do more shows about stuff like this. We are going into a winter of potential, very potential starvation worldwide. Uh, Sergeant Francis was showing me a New York Times picture. I think it was yesterday or day before of, of a, uh, what was, it was like, a, it was like a, a bridge over water, but the water level had gone down so far. I heard from uh, uh, my brother-in-law in California telling me how far the water table is going down in California. Lake Shasta, it's up in Northern California, way down. We have apparently a drought that's going through almost worldwide. I mean, I'm here in the east, southeast here. We have plenty of water. We rain like every day, and I'm thankful for it. Uh, but there are places in the world, many places where... Uh, there are major drought situations happening. So, yeah, Mr. Sandy Leofontaine, I got to get him on. He can talk about any of this stuff. Uh, we'll have him on in the future, maybe talk about some history. Uh, he called it the uh, an artificial famine called the Holomador. And what happened is Stalin, you know, they, 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 they nationalized the farms in the Ukraine. And the Ukraine was underneath Russia at that time. And they nationalized these farms and, and wanted these people to produce for Russia and everybody else. And if they didn't produce enough, they were in trouble. And if they tried to take enough food for themselves to eat properly, they were called hoarders. And uh, some of them were shot. And there were between 3 and 12 million people killed by Joseph Stalin. So, yeah, the left is very good at violence. At killing, at killing up to millions of people. And this is what they do best. And so cheating is not anything that should be surprising from them. I am not trying to win the leftover unless, you know, I came to them with a cross and some garlic and holy water. Uh, maybe I could get some, okay? Um, but I'm not trying to bring your average leftist over. If they see the light, that's great. I'm happy to welcome them. But people that I think have some sense that we can talk to, um, you know, my friend Mark, he's got sense. You can talk to him, even if he doesn't agree. Um, but even if sometimes we talk to certain people who are on the left and maybe we can talk through them, maybe I can debate someone on the left sometime and we're not going to agree on anything, but maybe I can talk through them by, you know, communicating with them. So anyway, uh, Mr. Sandy LaFontaine said, store grain and beans. Yeah. You guys should definitely be, because of the artificial, uh, the inflation of the Biden administration, because of, um, uh, you know, the prices, because of the fertilizer prices, because of the shortages, because of the droughts worldwide, because of the way they're trying to move us to green energy by playing games with, with prices and playing games with, with different things. They are engineering or helping to engineer potentially another catastrophe here. So. I don't know what's going to happen, but I would certainly be prepared for the winter if I were you. Uh, have some, have stored water, have stored food, 
be prepared in, in whatever way you can be uh, and, and watch out. Be prayed up, let's say. Meditate, be still, do your prayer um, and be ready and try to talk to other people about it. Those that don't believe you or whatever, just move on to the next one. Shake the dust off your feet and move on. Uh, yeah, uh, Sergeant France said 6 million Ukrainians starved to death. There's different numbers on that. I, I've heard anywhere from 3 to 12 million. I don't know. Um, okay. Um, Sticks Bass Base. Sticks Base says commies are just like Negon in The Walking Dead. I've never seen the movie Walking Dead. Is that the one with Christopher Walken? Or is that a different one? I can't remember. Uh, anyway. Yeah, he said 1932, 1932, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, even fascism is left wing, says Sergeant Francis. Fascism is just another version of Marxism. Let me remind you guys, Mark was telling me this morning on the phone how we need more power, or at least the power that we have now in the federal government. I think that's complete insanity. Um, no offense, Mark, but I think it's really naivete because with power comes evil. Stalin had the power to starve the kulaks, the Ukrainians, okay? He had the power. This government has the power to raid the ex-president's house under probably very fishy circumstances. They won't show the reasoning at all that they have because they probably don't have any good reason. But they have the power, they believe, they're confident enough to go after the ex-president. Can you imagine if Trump would have gone after Barack Obama that way. We would have rioting in the streets, okay? So these guys are doing stuff that they think they can get away with because they have the power. You know what else they have the power now? They just have this stupid so-called inflation, what are they called? Inflation Reduction Act. And I already said they're not reducing any inflation. It's so crazy. But in this thing, what they do is they give themselves more power. It, we've many of us have heard that there's 87,000 new IRS agents they're going to hire. Do we really need new IRS agents, 87,000, to come out and what? They're just going to bleed people dry. And do you know that they're all they're going to be armed? And I heard from uh, Chris at uh, 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 what's it called Gulf Gulf Shores Gun, I believe it's called Gulf Shore Gun. It's it's a local place here. Great guy. I interviewed him one day. He's a gun store owner, but really uh, 100% American. He was saying that the guns that these IRS agents are going to get are going to be military grade guns, possibly automatic. Okay, we can't have automatic weapons. Uh, we're going to allow potentially automatic weapons in the hands of the IRS. This is the kind of government we have now. And Mark and others want these guys to have more power. My God, people, this is not what the founding fathers uh, envisioned. It's nothing to do with what America is supposed to be. But again, and I've talked about this on other shows, we have become the kind of people who are easy to subjugate because we have been morally subjugated to begin with. We've allowed the killing in the womb of, what, 64 million babies since, since Roe v. Wade? Yeah, he's, uh, Sergeant France said, what about Scalia? Yeah, that was pretty questionable, wasn't it? Um, yeah, we've we've allowed the, the killing of unborn children to the tune of 64 million plus. How do you, you think there's no God, that God isn't going to punish us for that in any kind of way? You don't see certain acts of God taking place that nobody talks about anymore? Nobody talks about acts of God. You read the Bible in the old days, it was known that you would have droughts and famines and things like that because the people had turned from God. God wants to give us good things. But when we do wrong, we go into we go from blessing, as I talked about. I think I talked about this two weeks ago on the show, right? The blessings and the curses. We go from being a blessed nation to a cursed nation. We become a cursed nation, and that's where we are now. Hello, Ronald Creighton said hello. How are you, man? I'm glad to see you. Michael Manningly. Oh, my old friend Michael is here. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. It's more than intimidation. Death. Yes. Mike, I'm so happy to see you in the chat. You don't know what it means, brother. All right. Um, 
let's see. We're looking at some other comments here. Sandy, uh, here, I'm going to give, he, Sandy LaFontaine was here a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and he was talking about growing things. And I'm going to put this back in here because it's appropriate. It's appropriate right now. Grow Malabar spinach. It's like a, it's like a, a vine that can grow like crazy. Uh, tree collards, chard, moringa trees, linden trees, edible leaves, and learn to grow potatoes uh, for the calories. Yeah. And again, and I'm going to leave that up a little longer. Those are all great information, but in, in a quicker way too, get some stored food while you still can get some, store some water and have some protection. You may need it. Have some protection. Um, anyway, good stuff here. Let me go to the next point. I'm just moving point to point. I ain't going to go too long tonight. want to make a few more key points. Um, oh, talking about proof, okay? Again, you can't prove ultimately something to somebody you doesn't want proof to. But we don't have to prove things to everybody. We just have to show enough people that have only been watching CNN and MSNBC a little bit of stuff to show them that there's something going on. So I'm going to bring on the next one. And um, this one has to do with uh, the border. Okay. The border. Now we, I've heard from Mark that, Oh, there's no difference really, or not much difference between what Trump is doing and what Biden is doing on the border. I completely disagree. I didn't necessarily know how to, how do I show that? How do I, how do I tell somebody that won't believe it? I don't know. But I'm going to show you a video here that I think is pretty interesting. Um, and it has to do with the people trying to come break into our country. And you're going to watch the Texas National Guard involved who are stopping these people and then watch what happens. OK, this is not a real long one. Pay attention to this one. What are you going to do about the fact that our border is open to the world and that millions of them have come in illegally? How can you take the country seriously when it doesn't even have a border? And it doesn't. And we know that because on video every single day, people stream in. Fox's Bill Mulugin just caught the whole thing once again on camera. Take a look at this video we shot yesterday where we're standing. This is the first time we had ever seen this. The Texas National Guard closed and locked a gate on this property. It's a major crossing area, and they blocked the illegal immigrants from being able to come into this property. It's private property. The owner allows the National Guard and Border Patrol to work here. But you can see illegal immigrants started showing up. They weren't let in. They expected to be let in, and they were surprised they couldn't get in. Here's what happened, though. Take a look at this video. Border Patrol showed up. A supervisor came with a key, opened up that gate, and let all of those illegal immigrants in, symbolic of the way the state of Texas handles things versus the way the federal government handles things. Isn't that something? The border now, okay, that to me is exact proof when, when, <clears throat> when Mark was saying, maybe you'll watch this at some point, whoever can watch this. It's hard to argue that. You say, well, it's basically the same, you know, uh, Trump. I mean, I don't know how you can say that. I mean, Trump had a border wall, but Mark said people can come over, the, climb over that with a 30 foot uh, uh, um, <laughs> ladder. Um, I, I have heard that they made the top of that very hard to get over. Uh, my wife reminded me of that. And uh, getting under it is also hard to do. So they, they, they kind of figured that out a little bit. It's obvious that Trump had a border wall that was working. Everybody knew it unless you were just watching CNN and just or and MSNBC. And when Biden got in, he changed a lot of the of the laws. I mean, Trump had that's the problem when when you're a president and you put in executive orders, they can be flipped back. That's the problem with executive orders. They don't have a lot of staying power. They're easy to remove by the next president. So. The, the board, I mean, that's proof right there. Come on. Anybody has to say that there's a di major difference between Trump and Biden on the border. OK, Bi Trump, Biden's people is allowing these people. These people came up to a, 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 a fence. This is a private property place. And the Texas National Guard was getting out there and saying, no can do. We're not opening up. The Border Patrol arrives who are own run by Joe Biden and crew. 
and they let the same people in the country. Okay? It's right there on video. Now, what are you going to say? Oh, that's Fox video and they made it up or something? I mean, you can make up anything in your head if you want to play stupid games, but if you have any sense at all, you'll just look at it and say, wow, something is serious here. This is clearly a difference between what Trump is doing and what Biden is doing. I mean, we got to be honest here. We got to get our heads out of the sand before we lose our country. And I'm trying to do that with Mark. Mark's got a lot of good points. Some of the things I like, he, he caused me to think about a lot of subjects more than I, than I have before. That's good. But on certain things that I know to be true, we've got to wake people up. And those, and those that aren't, don't want to be woken up, we have to kind of go on to the next person at a certain point and just wake up the people that can't be woken up and move on. Um, I think that's, that's crazy. Um, that's a border situation. And one more video I'm going to show tonight. This is an outgrowth of the border issue. This is what it turns into in American cities. Um, let me get that one going. This is what it turns into once the people come in. Now we have another situation. We have a serious, serious crime problem. Tucker Carlson's been very good about stuff like this and hats off to him for talking about it. But very few people other than him are. The Republican candidates are not and they're stupidly losing. Anybody could almost win some of these races if they just hit the right issues. All right. So anyway, remember, border problem crime. Another sh one more short video. Go. It's not just happening in Georgia. According to the official numbers, you'll recall Joe Biden won the state of Pennsylvania by a little over a single percentage point in 2020. So it's been two years. Biden has become much less popular since then. Meanwhile, Pennsylvania, which is controlled by the Democratic Party, has become much worse, far more chaotic and dangerous. Here is the scene in the state's largest city on Tuesday. Nearly 100 shots fired on 57th Street between Haverford and Westminster tonight. A sea of evidence markers lined this West Philly street, telling of the potentially deadly chaos that unfolded here. Responding officers found four victims on 57th Street. Two shot in the head in critical condition tonight. One victim, we're told, in a BMW is an innocent bystander caught in gunfire and shot in the shoulder. All while kids and young adults were on a nearby playground. Over 100 shots right in the middle of the street. It's hard to believe that's an American city. It's hard to believe that's the place where our Constitution was written. It's totally unacceptable. And it wasn't organic. It didn't just happen. This is a result of policies from the Democratic Party. Period. Yeah, guys. Uh, 100 shots fired. 100 shots fired at Philadelphia. The birthplace of America. The Constitution. Declaration of Independence. City of brotherly love, right? Just like it used to be the city of the angels, Los Angeles. Um, massive changes have happened here in a very short period of time. And uh, we have to wake up to that and we have to realize a lot of that is our morality, yes. And a lot of it is leftist policies. Obama, I, I have God, I have a lot of video I'd love to show you. No, not tonight. We'll do it another time. But I've got some more video on Obama. Uh, the mastermind behind Biden and uh, what these what he did to set up America. Um, Michael Voorhees uh, of uh, Church Militant did a very good special on that. So you can go to churchmilitant.com, churchmilitant.com. They have a very good special they did on that. You can see the whole video on that. Mike, uh, my friend Mike, my old friend Mike, Michael Mattingly said, Martin and you have always been brothers. Yes, we have. We had a little bit of a fallout, a little issue for a while until he saw the light. Uh, thank God for him. Uh, just like the disciples, then they went their way. Um, yeah, uh, we, we're still brothers. Martin and me are probably as close as ever now, probably closer than ever. ever. And uh, yeah, he saw the light on some things and so did I. Thank God after, you know, just being blind for a long time. But hey, <laughs> that's what happened. Um, I don't want to go much longer tonight, guys, so I'm going to wrap. I want you guys to go vote. And now their primaries where I am in Florida here Tuesday, they've already had uh, early voting like the whole last week. And I hope you are educating yourselves about the candidates. I don't know when your primaries are, but get out and vote. Where I am, it's a very conservative county. It's pretty conservative. And 
whoever wins the Republican primary in most of these races will win in November. So the primary now is the most important one. The actual election day for us is Tuesday. Get out and vote for the conservative candidates. Uh, we have people like um, Carrie Smith who are running for uh, Santa Rosa County Board of County Commissioners. He is a per- guy for the people. Go out and vote for someone like Carrie who really cares. Um, Dr. Rudman is uh, is running for state uh, the state rep. Um, I'm I haven't been with him on every issue and, and I haven't agreed with him on everything. But he's running against a woman who has only been in this country a few years. She came from Russia. She claims to have been running from communism and and oppression. Uh, But a video came out recently showing that's really not the case. She didn't look like she was running at all in that video. She looked quite happy to be in Russia at the time. So go uh, go and look for candidates who are going to carry on and, and, and fight for freedoms that you believe in. Because I can tell you, Democrats are totally into what they're doing. They are going to get their candidates in. They are going to get their funny money in. They're going to get the way they do the elections in. We haven't fixed uh, the voting totally in our county yet. As far as I know, we're still using Dominion voting machines here, believe it or not. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. After all of what happened the last election. Uh, And that's probably going on all over the place. I don't know how much uh, Georgia has fixed their stuff a little bit. I don't know. But be part of the solution, guys. Don't just pray. Pray is great. Prayer and meditation are the best. Don't get me wrong. They're the best. But don't just stop there. Do something in your communities. Be the salt and light on the earth that Jesus talked about. We're here to be the salt and light. We're not here to just wait for some rapture that... I don't know when uh, people are going to get pulled away or all that who will who who will be pulled away. OK, all I know is right now we're here. Um, Rennie said vote SRC 23. What is SRC 23? Santa Rosa County 23. I don't know what that means. I'm a little ignorant about some of the voting things, Rennie. So if you want to spell it out a little bit better, let me know. Uh, Michael says. Uh, ha, I'm a Texan now, Central Texas. We are a re- republic. Well, God bless you, Mike. Miss you, man. Um, yeah. Um, so guys, uh, Sergeant Francis, don't worry, Mike, when the water runs out, uh, when the water runs out in California, you'll be joining us in Florida. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, he's in Texas, he said. So yeah, you can always go to the Rio Grande, I guess, but that's, that's seawater. All right. Anyway, um, the 23rd district, you mean the 23rd district? Is that what you're saying? Okay. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know. Or is that the, Oh, 23rd is the date. I'm sorry. (laughs) 23rd is the date. Tuesday is our voting date in uh, Santa Rosa County or Florida. So whatever you're voting, go out and vote guys, get, get, find out who you're voting for. And don't only, if since it's a primary, don't just vote for whoever, the uh, official Republican people told you to vote for. A lot of times they have their own buddy system. It's not always the best candidate. A lot of times it is not. It's the one who's bucking the good old boy system who is often the best candidate, not the one that all the people are getting behind and this and that. And just because a candidate says that they're a Trumper or they're Christian, they're conservative, whatever, do some research, you know, do some digging in, find out what's going on. And get out there and vote. Vote for the good people. And spread the word. Spread the word about these people. All right. I've said enough. You guys have been great. Uh, I've got so many things along the way I want to talk to you guys about. And I think I said all I can. Um, I'll have Mark hopefully on another day. Hopefully I'll do better if it is God's will and I do enough prep or whatever. I'll probably hopefully do a little better. I think I've learned some lessons from the last show. Um, So I thank you guys for your patience. Um, when you do live stuff, you're kind of like doing it in front of everybody. So there's, there's no place to hide. And that's kind of a good thing. You grow, you, you grow. That's what you do. You grow. We all should be growing. So, um, that's all I think for me, go to oldschoolus.com. Go to old school. I'm trying to click to it here. Go to oldschoolus.com for more information, natural health, success, freedom. We're doing all we can to 
promote those things. I, I, I put my email up there. I meant to put my website up there. Oldschoolus.com, natural health, success, and freedom. More important today than ever. This stuff is more important than ever. We've got to come together and uh, become independent, independent, and then we can spread our independence to other people. And you can always, you can donate one time or monthly to help we'll put it all back into what we're doing here, make the show better, uh, better equipment, all that stuff. Maybe we won't, won't have to go out for, what were we out for, like a minute or something? That was crazy. Maybe we can, maybe we can get a better setup. I don't know. But anyway, you can help us out by going there and, and donate. Uh, if you have any ideas for whatever, uh, people I should interview, uh, topics, what have you, uh, get in touch with me at info at oldschoolus.com, info at oldschoolus.com. I think uh, I think we got all your comments pretty much, a lot of the great ones. Uh, Sticks Bass, Stick Bass says, I wish my, hand, my hands were as nice. They're full of, I don't even know what the heck he's talking about. All right, guys, have a great weekend. I know we did two this week, but I thought it was necessary. And uh, your feedback is welcome. Even if it's bad, even if you tell me it's terrible, you're the worst debater uh, ever lived, uh, get off the the air. Whatever you want to tell me, uh, constructive criticism is always welcome. So uh, God bless you guys. Go out and vote Tuesday or wherever it is. Look it up where the voting is in your area. Let's put some God-fearing, decent people back in office. And let's become God-fearing, decent people. All right, guys. 